Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you guys for a tutorial on how to use a really awesome free plugin in Blender called EasyFX. <laughs> So EasyFX is a super awesome plugin that basically allows you to do post-processing in Blender without having to use the Node Editor. Now, the Node Editor, for those of you that don't know, it's just uh, it's basically Blender's uh, way of it's a user interface to kind of mix things together. So I'll show you it right here in a second. Uh, so it's basically just a bunch of these little nodes that are connected with strings and you can add things in like filter, blur, and if I render it, and then so you see there is no blur until I do this, 500 and you can see all of a sudden it's all completely gone, move 10, 50, and you can see it just gets a little bit blurry. And it's basically built up by connecting these old blocks with these strings. And basically what EasyFX does is it makes it a lot simpler. All you have to do is just check a box and then voila. So, in order to install this, uh, you're going to go to uh, this website, it's called, I'm not really not sure how to uh, pronounce it, but it's rymdnisse.net, and um, here I'll go to the homepage for a second here, and he's a really awesome guy, or I think he's a guy, but he has a lot of cool things, so you're just going to go to downloads, easy effects, and see he does make some other things too. And then you just click download easy effects. And here's the, here, this is a really good explanation. This is a free add-on for Blender which allows you to do post-production directly from the UV image editor and easy effects will automatically build your composition node tree. So you don't even have to connect anything. And it's beginner friendly and easy to use and advanced users can still access the node tree in the compositor to make manual changes. So it's really nice. So as you can see here, I have easy effects one. This is because I uh, already downloaded one earlier. So I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and drag this onto my desktop here. And you'll see inside there's a Python file. And for those of you that don't know, Python is a programming language and Blender runs off of it. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag this file out to our desktop here. And we can delete the zip file. And so you can see that now. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Blender and I'll go ahead and open up a test project that I was working on earlier, Training Cube Easy Effects. Oh no, it looks like it got rid of our render result. So I'm gonna have to re-render this really quick. All right, so I finished rendering. You can see I just rendered a quick low sample and I'm only rendering 50 samples right now. This is a scene I made a while ago. If you'd like to see the full thing, head over to remingtongraphics.net and look at my creative portfolio and you should see it there. Anyway, to enable this, we're gonna come to File, go to User Preferences, or you can just press Control-Alt-U. And then if you're not already, you should come into this add-ons tab up at the top. Then out down at the bottom, there should be an option that says install from file. Click this and then head to wherever you extract it to. Since I did the desktop for mine, I'm going to go there. You can see we have easyeffects.py and then we click install from file. And then you'll see we get this box right here, render easy effects. Just check this little thing over here and click save user settings. And then you can exit out of the user settings window. Now, if we come down here into our window with the train, if we press T, and you have to make sure this is in the UV image editor, so if you don't know how to get there, uh, in whatever window you're in, say you're in the default thing, we can come down to these little three lines, you can just split the screen, just like that. Then we can click this little thing right here, this cube, in my case, it can be different for you. Go into UV image editor, and voila, we have our image. And since I just want to look at the UV image editor for now, I'm just going to hide everything else. And now we press T, and we can see we get this weird graph stuff over here, but we just go down to Easy Effects, and you can see we have a bunch of different filters. Now, in the final version of this, I do have a lot of different post-processing effects. I took these off for this. But you can see we've got just a couple things. We've got Update and Re-Render, and also just Update, which both of these are tools for previewing your image. We can also auto update too. So if I were to uncheck auto update and I were to turn on glow, you'll see nothing changes. If I turn on auto update and then I turn on glow, you'll see it changes, just like that. So I'm gonna turn that off for now. We have a couple different features up here at the top too. We have flip image, which basically mirrors the image. And we also have split with original, which means if we turn on glow, for example, you'll see this half has glow, this half doesn't. We can also change the split too. So if I change it to 100, it'll cover the entire thing. If I change it to 17, you can see it cuts right there. And that's just a really 
really useful feature. So we'll leave on Glow for now. You can see uh, Glow, we have the threshold, so we can change the threshold of what glows and what doesn't. And that looks like the only real option for Glow other than Emission Only, which I'm not really sure what Emission Only does. Here, we'll see if we turn it off now. Yeah, it looks like Emission Only Glow is basically, to be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> but it's there. Uh, we also have Streaks which is uh, part of the glare so if we, uh, we can change the threshold here we can change the amount of streaks up to maybe five you'll see it does lag a little bit because it is really pressured right now so this is good for making stars and stuff off in the sky uh, once again we can check emission only not really sure what emission only does and we can also turn off streaks we also have a vignette, and I'm not sure if you notice this here, I'll do it with streaks. You'll notice this little compositing thing comes up up here on the top, and that means it's working on rendering your image and compositing it. So you can see vignette adds this nice, for those of you that don't know what a vignette is, it's basically a darkness kind of around the center image to draw attention to the center of the image. And you can see we can change the amount for that too, change it all the way down or all the way up. We also have these cool things like depth of field and motion blur. So if you don't have, uh, well, you have to set up depth of field accurately, otherwise it's not gonna work. So if I turn on depth of field here, you can see I had a empty in the middle of this uh, big metal cube here that defined the uh, uh, the uh, depth of field of the camera. If you don't know how to set up depth of field, find a tutorial on YouTube, they're really easy. But you can see it sets the focus of the camera. So everything in the foreground's out of focus, everything in the background's out of focus. And you can also change the f-stop right from here, which is a nice feature, although you don't have all the options you would in the node editor. We also have motion blur, and since this is just a still image, motion blur is not going to do anything for me, but it's there, so you can use it in your projects. We can also change these different features, just basic color correction things, so I can boost the brightness of my image, for example. Uh, point 0.1 actually seems, it seems like the numbers are actually kind of big in this. So you can see I can boost the brightness maybe by 1, boost the contrast maybe by 2, uh, boost the saturation 1.5, make it really saturated if I wanted to, or I could desaturate my image by changing it to point 0.8. I can make it a little bit blue by changing the shadows to blue, this is like color correction kind of stuff if you're uh, trying to make a dramatic scene. So we get this a little bit too much because it does lag so much. We also have these lens features down here and here's another thing we can go ahead and look at the split with the original thing and do 50-50. You can see just how much our image has really changed. I'm gonna turn back here, turn glow back on. Oh there you go so you can kind of see the what the really the threshold does here. Oh wait that's because it's on a mission only my bad. One. But you really get to see like what the different uh, post-processing things will do, and I think it's really nice, it's really useful. Uh, for the lens, we can actually add lens distortion. So if you, that's a little bit too much here, make point two, you'll see. Uh, so it kind of bubbles the image like a fish eye, which is an uh, effect some people like to use. Uh, in grungy scenes, you can use chromatic abrasion to really tear apart the thing, and for those of you that don't know what chromatic abrasion is, here I'll show you right here. If I uh, focus on this line right here, this line straight down the center, one chromatic abrasion set is zero, it's a nice clean line, but if I set it at one, you'll see it gets these color rips almost, and it gets this really nasty grungy thing, and it's great, it's absolutely great for a lot of things. Uh, for this I'm just going to set it to point, oops, that's a little bit too much, point two. I'm actually going to turn on depth of field again and a vignette because I'm going to try and make this image as good as I can. And there you go, you can really start to see that now. Uh, we can also add lens flares. Uh, I'm really not sure how lens flares work yet. I mean, I know what a lens flare is, but I can't get it to work for some reason. Uh, mist, we can add in mist to our image to make it seem a bit uh, foggy. You can see right there. Uh, it isn't real mist. It isn't like a. It isn't volumetric mist it's just kind of this fake kind of overlay but it still adds a nice feeling uh, this is doesn't really apply to this but you can add in a transparent sky or an image sky and you can also add in cell shading which for those of you that don't know here I'll show you cell, cell shading right now cell shading 
it basically makes it look like a cartoon, like a 3D cartoon almost. And I think that's a really cool feature. However, that doesn't really apply to this image either, so I'm just gonna turn it off. And that is an overview of Easy Effects for Blender. Now, Easy Effects is a free plugin, as I said earlier. You can use it, and uh, it's, it's just really nice. It's really great, and I, I'd love to see some of you guys using it, some of your projects with it. So, once again, the link will be down in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and remember to like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys later. Adios. Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you for five different tips and tricks with cameras in Blender. So let's go ahead and look at those right now. <laughs> 